you don't expect surprises. Kathy, do you? <laughs> no, I think we're with the consensus here. But yeah, I think the dot plot will be interesting to see what the dispersion of the dots is going forward. I think it'll be interesting to see if we see the long run expectations uh, come down. And of course, the summary of economic projections will be interesting as well. In the, in the press conference could be very interesting. I hope Paul doesn't say patient 25 times, but he might. And if there was a surprise, even if it's low probability, what, what should we be kind of on the lookout for potentially? What would really surprise me would be if, uh, if the chair were to back away from all his talk about cross currents and headwinds, because he's been very fixated on things like the China trade deal, Brexit risk, uh, China's slowdown, uh, the risk uh, back in January, the government shutdown. It would be interesting to me if he were to pull back from those things and say, actually, behind all this stuff, things are really going pretty well. Markets aren't expecting that. Markets that, are expecting to focus on the cross currents and headwinds again. That wouldn't match up with what we're actually seeing, uh, though, no, right, in terms it, of the data. It, in the short term, it certainly yeah. wouldn't. You know, manufacturing is definitely struggling, no, no yeah. question about that. Um, and the consumer, I don't think is struggling, but is transitioning from last year when it was really driven by big tax cuts to this year, no tax cuts. So we're seeing a bit of a slowdown there as well. I don't think those things are very bad. Uh, I'd be surprised if Powell were to emphasize that. I think he's just going to say it's okay, but we still got to worry about these cross currents. Well, that's what I was going to say. We, we talked to another economist in the last hour who said uh, the slowdown's real, but he thinks that we're coming out of that. It's the government shutdown for starters yep. and then the tariffs. Uh, do tariffs create a bigger pro uh, do they are they a continuing problem or if we don't see higher tariffs is this a one off effect that we can adjust to or not I think we've kind of adjusted to it now what we really don't want to see is the trade talks breaking down and the tariffs going up or, or being broadened that would be absolutely horrible that's that's definitely not what I'm expecting but the Fed, of course, can't really get into the business of predicting political events, at least not in public anyway. That, that's a game they don't want to be in. Right. The thing that's interesting to consider here, I mean, I'd be interested in your thoughts on this. One year ago, what was the conversation around the Fed? Are they going to be behind the curve? Are we going to overheat? Um, so I, I think that maybe you have to be careful about projecting ahead three and four quarters and say, well, here's where the Fed's going to be at that moment, right? I mean, can things change relatively quickly? Oh, of course they can, but I, I think the big headwind for the Fed is a slowdown globally. And particularly after the European Central Bank uh, announced they're actually going to, to issue more loans, that means that they're in easing mode again. It, and we've already got a record-wide spread between U.S. short-term rates and those in Europe. Uh, how can they, it, it'd be very unreasonable for them to think about or even talk about tightening further when you've got the other major central banks trying to go in the other direction at a time when our economy is slowing down. So it, it doesn't make any sense to me for people to be even thinking that we're going to reverse course here anytime soon. I mean, Mike, I know you caught this. But the Bank of America Merrill Lynch fund manager survey yesterday, it saw that one third of investors saw now the China slowdown is the top concern, their biggest concern when it comes to investing. And that replaced trade concerns, which had been the leading concern for the past uh, nine months. How how concerning is the importing of additional slowdown from overseas to you? Sure. I mean, uh, what's happening, the China slowdown and the trade talks are sort of intertwined, right? Yeah. So you can't separate one from, from the other. But as China slows down, that hurts Europe, that hurts the rest of the world, and we import deflationary pressures. So again, another reason for the Fed to sit tight, at least for the time being, to see how this whole picture plays out. Mike, are there any scenarios for a Fed stopping? stopping raising rates, doing nothing for a while, and then picking back up and starting hiking again? Um, there are. I think, that, I think that the very long kind of status quo sections, actually it was the mid-2000s if you think about it, right? I mean, when did the Fed stop hiking before it, before it eased? It was more than a year. Yeah. Uh, right, so 2006 a, you stopped. But there's definitely a camp. I'd, pro I'd probably be in that camp if wage increases yeah. continue yeah. and if we stay tight sure. and everything yeah. else. Why that, wouldn't they? That's what I, I, I am. can't yeah. believe the next thing is going to be down unless something really hits the right. fan. Right. I mean, no, so, I think it's. I think it's. The, and that's that why. Makes a lot of sense. If, if like the consensus is correct, we go. But to a lot of America. people would like that. So you have, the, you know, Fisher, Richard Fisher, still saying we have no ammo. You know, if the average. Easing cycle is like three points. Yeah. You can't go. No, there's not. No. The averages are kind of out the window at this point. Although, just to your point, Becky, uh, 2015, right? Mm -hmm. Fed hiked in December 2015. Uh, the market didn't love it. It was a little bit controversial. It was a close call. And then didn't do anything for a year. I mean, right. Don't we all really hope the next move is eventually up? Up, yeah. 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 Absolutely. But then it resumed up, obviously. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, if, we're, if you could tell me right now the next move is definitely down, I'm, yeah. if I had stocks, I'd sell them, I think. 
What's your forecast right now for, for I think the next gonna, hike? They're going to wait until uh -huh. the fall, and then I think they're going to hike. Just you know, As Joe says, oh, wa wages okay. are accelerating. That's what's going on in the background. So we've got all this focus on China and global slowdown and all the rest of it. I think a lot of those risks will be diminished by the second half. China's stimulating like crazy. I think there will be a trade deal. I don't think there'll be a Brexit crash out. So by the second half, we'll be focusing on the domestic fundamentals, which I think will be driven by the labor market. And the Fed has a long, long history of responding to faster wage growth by getting nervous. Uh, right. So they're, they're, they're going to leave a dot in the dot plot today for a reason. And, and the reason is, is worry about wage growth later in the year, not now. Speaking of dot plots, I mean, how much do you think the Fed could talk about or indicate, maybe plant the seed that they're going to move away from dot plots? How, you know, do you think the Fed will address, for instance, the composition of the balance sheet in terms of duration there? Yeah, I think that actually the balance sheet could be really interesting. Um, I, I think they want to move away from the dot plot. I think they've made that pretty clear. They just don't know how to do it yet, or they haven't communicated how they would do it or how they would communicate their expectations without the dot plot now. Uh, but the balance sheet could be very interesting. You know, as a fixed income person, I want to know, are they going to shorten the duration? Right. How are they going to handle the, the MBS? How fast is it going to be? How slow is it going to be? Uh, where are they going to end up? We think they'll end up around $3 trillion or so, um, give or take, on the balance sheet and about a trillion or so on reserves. I think that's what the market's the expecting market doesn't really how they get there. Right. The market doesn't really know how to measure all of this, though, because it's kind of uncharted ground. And, and, and while you can say, sure, it has some effect, we, we just don't know how much. Yeah, there have been, you know, of course, a million PhD studies on this, and there will be probably for hundreds of years to come. Uh, but yeah, we figure the the Fed figures that the increase in the balance sheet probably subtracted about one percent from long-term rates. So if you undo that gradually, it should lift long-term mm -hmm. rates. But you know, measuring that and calculating that with all the other factors that go into it, it, it is almost impossible. Plus, you still have a negative term premium, so that argues that none of that had any effect.